Hello again everyone and welcome to the first video in our measurement unit series. Today the topic will be imperial measurement of length. So you might be wondering what imperial measurements are and this is what they are. Imper imperial units of measure include the inch, foot, yard, and mile. Um, so when you think imperial, think USA. All right, our partners down south there, that is their uh, system of measurement is they use imperial measurements. So um, you'll always hear inch, foot, yard, mile when you go, go to the States. Um, here in Canada too though, uh, industries like such as construction and things like that, they definitely use imperial still. Like you go to Home Depot, you will go look at lumber, you're going to see a bunch of imperial measurements. Um, so kind of the background of imperial measurements is that uh, they kind of resemble or people used to measure things based on common objects, um, such as really like parts of their body. So you can use a personal referent to estimate a length. Each referent is an approximate measure for an imperial unit. So it's really a reference point, a reference. So the inch you can see is uh, roughly your thumb length from the first knuckle. Foot is roughly your foot length. Yard is roughly your arm span. So that's from when you uh, put your arms out. Um, actually, that's just, sorry, that'd be one arm, you know, out to the side. Uh, mile would be distance walked in 20 minutes. So that one always makes me laugh. The uh, average distance you'd walk in 20 minutes was about a mile. So those are these rough kind of startings of the imperial system. They definitely got more exact as time went on. Here are some of the relationships between the imperial units. So one foot is equal to 12 inches. So inch is the smallest imperial unit, okay? Um, so if something that is less than an inch, then they'll get into fractions of an inch. One yard then is equal to three feet or 36 inches. One mile is equal to 1,760 yards or 5,280 feet. So the one thing that you can uh, notice likely right away is you're used to metric. You're used to powers of 10. In metric, we have really nice, neat, orderly numbers. In imperial, they're kind of, they seem random. If you're not used to imperial, these seem totally random. And this is just um, units of length. There's other types of imperial units out there as well. All right, let's look at some examples, how does to convert between units. So um, what I'll show you is just kind of the most basic way, which is a proportion, but you can always use multiplication as well. Um, our first one, let's convert five miles to yards. All right, so with a proportion, you always want to start off with a math fact. So the math fact we're going to use in all of these proportions is really our conversion fact. So in case you don't know, don't remember what a proportion is, because I know you would have been shown them before, a proportion is simply when you equate two fractions. So you see this left fraction is equal to the right fraction. Um, so I'm going to begin with this math fact. So again, this will always be some sort of math fact. And proportions are a really useful strategy or um, procedure in math. Uh, and a real life. So your left side is always that math fact. It'll change as the topics change, but that's the way I'm going to get you guys to do it. So the math fact we're going to look at with this one is just what are miles to yards. All right. So hopefully you remember from our previous um, previous screen is that one mile, and I wrote this kind of small, guys, uh, is equal to 7,000, sorry, 1,760 yards. Like I said, I wrote that kind of small. On the right side is just now the stuff, the information from your question. Okay, so this is your question. Let's extend that fraction line a little bit. All right, so in the question, we are, we know we have five miles and we're wondering how many yards that would be. So hopefully you notice that I kept, I, I put miles on top in my first fraction, meaning I have to put miles on top in the second fraction. If I would have put the yards on top in the first, then I would have to put the yards in top in the second. So you always have to match your units. Next, we will cross multiply. So when you cross multiply, I always like to, to lead in with bringing my uh, variable to that left side. When you cross multiply as well, just know that you're not taking the units with you. That's just to help you set it up. So I'm just going to look at 1 times x and then 5 times 1,760. 1 times x is simply x, and then that number would be 8,800. So with a proportion, as long as you know how to put things in the right position, um, really you don't have a lot of thinking. So that can be a good thing. 
Um, they're a little bit longer than what some people like to do because some people might realize, well, if one mile is 1,760, well, maybe I'll just show this. So this would be method one. Uh, method two, and I'll, I'll only do this one time. Uh, method two is if I know that one mile is equal to 1,760, well then, to figure out my answer here, I just go five, because I have five miles times 1,760. And you can see that's exactly what the proportion got you to do as well. So the proportion would get you to that logic without you having to think about it. In the second method, it'd be you taking care of the logic. Like you understand, oh, I just multiply that by five. Okay, so your choice as we move forward, but I'm gonna go with the proportion way, um, just because students who struggle in math, that'll be an easier um, procedure for them. So in the second one, we're looking at feet to inches. All right, so math fact on the left side, I know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. In this question, I know that we are, we're given 14 feet. We're wondering how many inches, so X inches. Again, I, when I multiply, I'll bring my X to the left side. So it would be one times X equals 12 times 14. Notice I did not bring the units. One times X is X. One times 14 is 168. And then now, what are we wondering about? We're wondering about inches. So converting is really easy. Um, the next kind of thing we'll look at is, you can see it's a little bit different. It says 100 inches to feet and inches, and then 14 feet to yards and feet. So what's happening here is when you don't have a whole number of feet, like in uh, example C, then the leftover measurement, you, um, you break it up in terms of the next smaller unit, and then the thing that is smaller than feet is inches. All right, so <clears throat> what we're going to do here, that's my phone going off. It's blowing up, people. I'm very popular. Back to this question. All right, so the first thing I want to figure out is how many whole feet I have um, in this 100 inches. So what I'm going to do, uh, well, first of all, I guess we should write down, just in case you guys forgot, that one foot is equal to 12 inches. And I'm wondering how many feet go in there. So I'm going to really divide this 100 uh, by 12. So this is the way I'm choosing to do it. So I'm going to, this first step is really you're figuring out how many whole units whatever you're dealing with uh are within this amount you have okay so that would work out to 96 now i have four remaining units so what this tells me really then is i have eight full feet and four inches left over so my remainder is going to be my that lower unit okay so step one is kind of figure out how many whole uh, units you have, and then step two, you can kind of put it together in that answer. So the next one, um, 14 feet to yards. Okay, so what we should remember is that if we're converting to yards, that one yard is equivalent to three feet, roughly. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to divide my 14 by three. So three, because we know that three feet is one yard, so I'm looking for how many yards are in this 14 feet. Uh, that's going to be 12. So I know I have four whole yards and then this is going to be, so this is yards and this will be the lesser, the next down the lesser unit, which would be feet. So then I know it's going to be four yards, two feet. Okay. So that is when you have this combination of units. Okay. So it's not going to work out in a perfect amount of yards, there's some left over feet or whatever the situation may be talking about. All right, example two. Um, let's just get into the kind of a uh, word problem or situation. Alex purchased seven feet of ribbon to trim some napkins. There, uh, so if you're wondering, so here, here's the napkin. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm kind of choking there. And then we're putting a trim on the napkins. All right, so that's what we're doing with this. Uh, the ribbon is sewn around a napkin, which is 14 inches wide and 16 inches long, that's supposed to say. How many napkins can Alex trim with this ribbon? All right, so the first thing I think we need to find out is um, this, the, the napkin is, it's measurements. Sorry, guys, I'm kind of not think I, oh, you can see I can't talk very well. All right, let's get back to this. Um, the first, uh, the napkin is measured in inches, but then we know that he bought ribbon yards. So we really got to convert that yards to inches. 
uh, to, to then figure out how many napkins we can deal with. Okay, so let's do that. The way I'm going to do that, so I'm going yards to inches here. Yards to inches. I'm going to use my proportion. Okay, so yards to inches, I know that one yard is equal to three feet or 36 inches because there's 12 inches in a yard. Or sorry, 12 inches in a foot. Um, then we know that this person bought seven yards and we're wondering how many inches that would be. So one times X, seven times 36. X then equals 252 inches. Okay, so that's how many inches of um, ribbon that this person has. Now we want to know, well, how many uh, or how much ribbon does it take to just complete one napkin? Well, then we're really just going to find the perimeter of that. So the perimeter would be equal to two times the length plus two times the width. And in our diagram above, we already said that it's uh, 14 inches wide and 16 inches long. So two times 16 plus two times 14, sorry. So 32 and 28, that is 60. So he has 252 inches of ribbon and he needs 60 inches of ribbon for one napkin. So this is in all, he's got that much in all. This one is for one napkin. Just so we're following along at home. Okay, so the third thing then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the same type of calculation or thinking that I did in the previous example. I want to see how many whole napkins I can make out of the 252. So I'll do that through division. How many perfect sets of 60 lie in 252? And then we'll see we have some leftover as well. Okay, so um, it's going to be 60 divided by 252. And 60 doesn't go into 2, 60 doesn't go into 25, it does go into 252, 4 times, so you get 240. So that's 12, so we have a remainder of 12. So we can complete 4 whole napkins and we'd have 12 inches of leftover. 4 complete napkins. With 12 inches left over. I should put a little dot there at inches so you don't think it's the word in. All right, so that is how you complete that example. All right, example three. One of Eric's steps are 18 inches long. How many steps would he take to walk one mile? All right, so we're talking about miles and wondering about this is in inches. So really, we got to convert everything to the same unit. That's always the name of the game. So um, we can't really convince. Uh, convert inches to miles because there's not enough inches to make a mile, but it's easy to convert a mile to inches. All right, so it just takes a couple maybe conversions. We know that one mile is equal to 1,760 yards. All right, um, now to get that into feet, there is three yards in every, uh, sorry, there is three feet in every yard. So I have times that by three. So that turns into, I'm just calculating it myself, uh, 5,280 feet. All right, but we know there's 12 inches in every foot, so then I have to multiply that by 12, and I'll finally get to my mile in inch form, which is 63,360. So... We're wondering how many steps it would take him to walk 63,360 inches. So to figure that out, we can actually just divide. Um, 63,360 divided by 18. Like how many times will 18 go into there? It actually goes in an even amount in this one. If it didn't, you can just round uh, in future questions. But it looks like he'd have to take, he'd take uh, 3,520 18-inch steps. So that one was actually rather quick to do. All right, so there's a sampling of how you deal with um, converting um, and their problems. So when you're, when you're converting, I would recommend proportions until you just feels easy and you can kind of shortcut it and use your own multiplication. Um, when you're dealing with the problems, just make sure you identify what you're wanting to do with the units first. And that takes some practice. So hopefully this made sense. If it didn't, go talk to your teacher or come find me. Have a great night, everybody.